This week on Tech Talk Tonight, we'll tell you about Windows 8, why Twitter is over, and how you can vote using your Wi-Fi connection. All that and more, coming up next. This is Tech Talk Tonight, episode number 57, recorded Thursday, May 31st, 2012. Space Zombies. Tech Talk Tonight is brought to you by Sleeping Computers. What do they dream about? Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, Tech Talk Tonight. This is episode number 57, I do believe. Um, We've been on a little bit of a hiatus. Hiatus. A major hiatus. It was, what, three weeks? Mr. Gavin Ray Camper. I think it was over a month, if not two. Over, I, I, okay. If, if it really did feel that long for you, then... Our few major viewers, our few only viewers, I should say, forgot that we were a show. But we have some new viewers. We actually doubled our female audience tonight, I believe. She already left. Oh, well, we almost doubled our female she, audience She tonight. saw the pre-show and got out as quickly as possible. Well, she didn't see the wonderness that is this, the actual show. And she should have stuck around for the after show, because we know that's where the actual action at. Magic habits. Anyway, um, so it's been a long time. Gavin, what have you been up to? Um, oh, not much. We already know you're married. Just drinking some ski. You've been to Hawaii and back. Went to Hawaii, bought a uh, dining room table. Uh, oh, I got a box of crap. You got a box of crap from this woot. Which was not... I, I actually got two boxes of crap. I think that's unprecedented. How, wait. I should have taken a photo, actually. Yeah. So, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did you actually purchase two boxes of crap? No, I purchased one. And it came in two boxes. And then, well, I guess. I don't know. I think, so I put the wrong zip code because I recently moved. So I put my Chicago zip code, but my St. Louis address. So everything was confused. And, <laughs> and it multiplied while it was out. It, re- it returned to sender. And I don't know if they sent another one or maybe it was just two boxes. But I got my first box of crap, which was awesome. It was a uh, Zune like, speaker thing. But it has an aux in, All so right. I can use it for an iPod, but it didn't have a power cord, so I had to buy a $25 power cord. Oops. 25 bucks? Dang. Zero jumble calendars, as Katie said, which Aww. is nice. And uh, what else? Oh, a space heater, which I, I wanted. I calendars if anybody wants one. When I'm at work, I'm always freezing. It's like 22 degrees in there, so I was going to buy a space heater anyway. Wait a second. No, this is a Braden what grinds Braden's gears right here. You're one of those that like plugs his computer into the same socket that that little space heater that goes underneath your desk and then basically ruins the no no i plugged it into a separate socket it's probably on the same circuit so it doesn't probably doesn't matter but it's in a separate (sighs) outlet for the record you're killing me i have multiple outlets per my i feel sorry for your help desk anyway so i got those two things what else did i get i don't even remember katie um and then i got a second box which was in fact, truly crap. Like a, 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 a plastic wine bottle cover, a, a blank T-shirt, a dinosaur plush dinosaur. Actual uh, blank? Like it was just a white T or? It was yellow. Yes, it was, yellow. It was extra large. Uh, two shopping bags with flowers on them. Okay. Um, yes, it was a surfing cow. So. Uh, but anyway, that was my box of crap. It was, I was actually, I added up the cost of the heater plus the cost of the speaker, if I look on Amazon, is about 70, 60, 70 bucks. So nice. I, was, I was definitely happy. Well, in my box of crap, I got this uh, power supply. Wait, did you get a power? You did not. I didn't get a box of crap, but I did get a power supply. For what? 1200 watt, uh, you know, Corsair. AX1200. What is that for? Uh, this is for the streaming computer. Oh, okay. Know. Well, I think um, people All the are, other parts are indicator. I would ask you what you've been doing, but... Uh, I went on vacation and, uh, you know, uh, came back from vacation and essentially started hunting for a job. But no. we'll get into that later. Indeed. Okay. First, top story. Top story. Tech. This, this week, actually today, Microsoft launches Windows 8 release preview. Uh, did you know you could download the ISO of the new Windows 8 right now? Right today, Brain. 
I didn't know until you came down here, sat in my basement, and told me. So I haven't installed it yet myself because some of us work during the day. <laughs> oh, I guess you do too. Yeah. But uh, initial initial uh, summary reactions. reactions are not that great for. Is this geeks like coming like, from the blogosphere? Uh, coming from Twit, okay. actually, right. like most of my opinions. Um, it's apparently the the deal is their the desktop is essentially like just a single app in their metro interface. So it's like people like us who have learned Windows throughout the year are throughout the years, the 10, 15, 20 years that Windows has been out, um, are kind of getting screwed here. Okay. Uh, so if you take things like, for example, Internet Explorer, if you open Internet Explorer in Metro and you do something and then you go into Internet Explorer in the desktop interface, not the same. It's like a separate program. Is it things indeed like, a separate program? Like, or essentially? I mean, it, it essentially is, right? Because the Metro interface is, a bit, is built for tablets and smartphones, where the desktop is, well, the desktop. So it's totally different experience. Um, from what I heard, it's hard to get between... Uh, Metro and the desktop, like if you want to save a file perhaps from Metro to the desktop, that's hard to do. Um, you can't even boot into the desktop. You okay. have to, It will only boot into Metro and then you can click the desktop. This is something that I am not interested in at all. Okay. I am not even going to try it. First off, it's only the preview. So this is where they get all the feedback and try to fix not things. Not really, though. See, that's the thing. They've been through two betas. This is the release candidate. This is the release This is what... Th nothing's going to change other than security fixes right uh, from this point. So okay, well, I think I, I think it's going to be a flop. I'm just calling it right now. I think that when... It was Longhorn, then Vista. They still changed things after the release candidate on Vista. Perhaps. But, it. I mean, okay, so... Are they releasing any tablets with this operating system running on it? Because it really sounds like they're trying to move towards this singularity of tablets and desktop PCs as far as an operating system. That's what they're concerned. saying, but I, from what I'm hearing, I mean, I still need to use it, obviously. I haven't even seen it. Um, it sounds like that it's going to be good for tablets and it's going to be good for smartphones, but it's not going <laughs> to be good for a desktop um, and Rob environment. And points out. When did you ever actually open Internet Explorer? <laughs> That's true. Exploder. Who does that? Um, so it'll be really interesting to see. I think uh, Windows 8 is supposed to actually come out, what, in October or November? Yeah, that's normally their release. Really um, so it'll be very interesting to see if people pick up on this or if people just in mass do not go for it, which I think is a very, very probable uh, situation. I agree. I probably won't be downloading it. Uh, maybe... If I get bored, but I'm not bored anymore these days. Because you're anyway. not bored with uh, Space News. Space this, News is awesome. The this story was great. I read all the way through it, so you know that means I actually liked it. The past week has been all SpaceX. What what did they do, and is it over already? So SpaceX, um, this is the first commercial. Basically, they're the commercial NASA. Uh, they sent a nice little rocket up into space. It docked with the ISS. Uh, I in it? I... International Space Station. ISS. ISS. I said it right first. And they delivered a bunch of food, and they brought back, or they then loaded all these experiments that they had already done up there, and they brought them all back, and now the capsule that came back to Earth landed safely in the ocean. They got it. Uh, let's see here. This was all at 842 Pacific Daylight Time, and we have our first completed Space mission by a commercial organization. Yeah, it's too bad we couldn't Skype in Doug because he's the space expert of all our friends. But but essentially I mean, that's his competition now. Like, well, so SpaceX was actually contracted by NASA. So the fact that they splashed down was huge for SpaceX. If SpaceX had done 90% of the mission but had not delivered, like splashed down correctly and delivered the stuff back to Houston... They're essentially they would not be paid. It'd be a failure. Well, and what were they paid? Like two hundred million, two hundred, three hundred million, or something. I mean, it wasn't a huge amount, but uh, well, yeah, like they that, are being that paid, probably like covered the cost of fuel. They are being paid by NASA, and they hope to modify the capsule that they use, the Dragon spacecraft, to carry humans in the future, which would be cool and 
Lots of, what I think is the most exciting about all this is that a lot of people think that normal, like, people will be able to do, like, space flight trips for, like... Right. For, like, you know... A million. Or no, no, no. Couple. Like, like they think they can get it down below 10000 possibly even below $5,000 per person. So Within our lifetime, point, do you think this is oh, actually going to... yeah, happen? within the next 15 to 20 years. Okay. So... That would be huge, right? Like, who oh, thought that, like, you and I in the... In our age would be able I to I was in actually... the 90s. You remember the 80s. No, I don't. Be able to... You're an old fart, shall we say. I saw half of the 80s, but that only means that I was five you had at a the mullet. end of them. You had a mullet, and don't you lie. I don't think I ever had a mullet. I had a mohawk. <laughs> this, that doesn't count. That makes you more 80s, I think. Uh, all right. So, okay. So, SpaceX... Do we think their funding eventually will be completely from that actual vacations that they're essentially going I to mean, offer? Yeah, they they can do a lot with this, considering they're one of them and the Russians are the only ones going up to space at this point. NASA wants to focus their energies on more discovery type missions to go right. to planets and to other places, which is probably good. Um, well, and they, they... SpaceX will take this. Basically, they're like the semi truck of the for the ISS, right? They're just going to be yeah. taking up supplies for the next ten years. And so. NASA's got plenty of other like probes out there. Like there is this uh, Voyager is almost out of our galaxy right now, or out of our solar system right now. Really? And they're essentially waiting for that to happen. Like they want to know what's out there in interstellar space. And so I, I would find a lot of nothing. Well, it's interesting to know what that nothing is. Anyway, next story, what do we got? Uh, bringing it back uh, to the kind of unimportant daily lives of that we live, Twitter has been in the news. One, this is a really cool story. Did you see this today, Brain? That <sighs> I saw this. But T. Boone Pickens. <laughs> you seem a lot more excited about this than Dude, me. this is amazing. Okay. T. Boone Pickens and uh, Drake, which is, I don't really know who he is, but he's apparently like a pop star. He made um, his money in, on a Canadian soap opera, and now he does luxury super rap. That's his claim to fame. And I like the person who ever took the screenshot of this. They follow Drake, but they do not follow T. Boone to Pickens. So Drizzy, or Drake, tweets out today, the first million is the hardest. And then out of nowhere, apparently T. Boone Pickens is following Drake, or at least he saw the tweet he says disclaimer t boone's pickens is a oil tycoon billionaire now he's into solar farming or something and yeah. or, continue then he tweets out the first billion is a hell of a lot harder rt at drake the first million is the hardest so he was basically directly talking to drake who back in the day they would not be talking almost at any point in time and black then, rapper old white haired and man. then drake replies at boone pickens just happen. stunted me on happy, <laughs> which yeah, I don't even know what that means to be honest. But uh, I, the translation I'm 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 getting I'm getting a translation here. Burn. It means he burned me. Yeah. He screwed. He he got me. He whoa, got me good. Hey, whoa. Hey, I didn't say it. PG. Drop it. Drop like it like it's hot. Like it's hot. Uh, the other aspect, uh, you posted this story, Braden. Eight percent of the. Whoa, US wait. We have to read adults. the very last comment on this story. Moreover, camera on me. Twitter has now peaked and concluded, so pack your things and stop reading. It's been fun. So Twitter's over, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Continue I mean, on, sir. Uh, I don't think it's concluded, although maybe it has. It says 8% of U.S. online adults now use Twitter daily. Yeah, only Is that 8%. a lot or a little? I don't it, really, I well, can't like, decide. It's doubled, essentially, in the past couple of years, but it's still only up to 8%. And this, this is, is like not adults in the U.S., so... That's a lot of people. That's the baby boom generation. That's no, no, no. That's eight percent of the of people who are online. Okay, but still, I guess a lot of adults are online. Yeah. Well, so it, it, that was another disclaimer. Adults online. So, but eight percent. That's. I mean, daily is. I, I I guess daily is. I fall into that. Do you go on Twitter daily, or tweet daily? <laughs> I'm seeing updates from Twitter almost on a daily basis just because they come up in different feeds and such. Anyway, that's um, boring. All right, moving on. Next, we have some uh, local St. Louis stories. So yes. if you're from Chicago, you might get bored. But uh, yeah, it's still funny. 
the 48 hour film festival st louis is coming up what Brian, what is the 48 i've never heard of this such a thing we've talked about it on this show before the 48 hour film festival which i've been involved with like for the past seven years now in st louis um we have a weekend essentially tomorrow night i will be given a line of dialogue oh it's tomorrow yes the, the, the kickoff event is tomorrow night. Okay, so a line of dialogue, a prop. Is there free food? A character, not at this, and not at the kickoff. Why do you keep interrupting me? Line of dialogue, character, prop. And they'll give me the genre of the film that I have to make. And it's between four and seven minutes. It's a, so a short, real short film. And I have to produce this within the 48 hours. Now I say me, really, I have a team. Gavin's actually going to do all of the editing, I heard. Uh... Actually, He's going to do all the acting Gavin's in it? Gavin's actually not involved. I'm the social media chair. Actually, I could use that. I'm the director of social media. Fine. It, I could I'll... use that for like the, the actual premiere and such to Fine. see I'll if we can... create your Twitter account. All right. We'll see how that works out. So essentially, I'm going to be spending the weekend... Um, where are you doing it at? Don't you always have a home base? Uh, home base will be here. This is where home. the editing computer and everything is home anyway. Home base so. is your home base. Home base is home base. But you've done it like, you've set up your home base in like a cabin before, haven't you? We, oh yeah, so the very first 40-hour film festival we did, we were, uh, we picked our location beforehand, because you can do that. You can scout locations out beforehand. They don't want you filming anything or writing anything beforehand. So we were, we wanted to make the film at my grandpa's cabin. We had that all like worked out. So we did all the editing out in the middle of Missouri woods. That's scary. And uh, another time, we actually set up kind of home base in the Avon Theater in Priest, Illinois. I did editing there, which was kind of weird, but that film came out too. Um, Speaking we, of uh, editing uh, films, you also graduated in the past few months. I did. Um, interactive Digital Media, Bachelor's of Arts from Webster University. Alumni. Ooh, you were wearing the alumni cap. Indeed. If we were going to drink coffee tonight, I had my alumni mug, too. But I don't drink coffee. I know. What's up with that? Wait, have you ever drank coffee? Nope. Okay. Tangent, we'll discuss later. I've smelled anyway. it. Smell is 70% taste. So sure. I've 70% to tried it. All right. So, yes, I am out in the job market now. Um, I'm applying everywhere. Got all these resume stuff Job updated. hunting sucks these, these days. I concur i yeah i definitely concur on that we should have a show on just that because just on job hunting i mean katie and i both uh because we moved to st louis we were both finding jobs and it just i mean not really finding jobs i mean we shouldn't have a show on finding jobs but we should but it just it just sucks like the whole system is broken i feel like and you know what we should do it. is make this profitable and make this be our job because this would be the most awesome job ever well, see, the problem is lots of companies are trying to face this fact, but no one can do it right. And why is that? No one can figure it out. Unless you know exactly why it's broken and how to fix it. Why and, job hunting itself is broken and yeah, needs to be fixed? Because, like, like, there's tons of job posting websites, Dice.com, uh, yep. Monster, uh, Stack Overflow Careers, which we're posting in our show notes so Braden can, so all the recruiters can find Braden. <laughs> Yes, it's um, out there. I think Stack Overflow Careers is the best that I've seen, but no one, no, okay, it doesn't have any recruiters there. No one's actually hiring from it yet. They have the nicest setup to actually like put my information out there because first off, they were able to import all of my info from LinkedIn, yeah. which I had already spent all that time um, to put all the info in there. And this is the one main reason that, or the biggest gripe I would have about why I think the system is broke is the fact that. Even though I'm submitting my resume to all these places online and everything, they still want me to basically sign up for whatever uh, hiring system they're using online. Which no one uses the same. You never no, find two, nobody has the same. You never find two job apps that are actually like it actually saves you time by logging in. And then they want you to put in all the information again that you just provided in your resume. And as Katie points out out in the chat room, the resume parsers are like the worst thing in the universe. Like they say, "Oh, just upload your Word document and we'll parse your resume." Yeah. Never works. Nope. Like why why would they even why even provide that service? It it never ever 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 works. And who, as far as employers out there, like that's who, if we ever did a podcast just on getting jobs, we'd need employers that do a bunch of hiring because who actually reads all that stuff? Yeah. Because it, it's going to sit out there in some sort of database 
and it's going to be like the hiring database. Then after, actually, after you get hired, you have to put all your information into the HR database, and those two won't ever actually sync. Anyway, we need to digress. Move on, move but on. Uh, that's a clearly passionate uh, topic for a lot of people. It's true. And, I mean, with uh, at least in St. Louis, the I heard the unemployment rate is going down only because people have given up on finding jobs. <laughs> right? Because the job, the um, unemployment numbers are only if you've actually tried to look for a job within the past 30 days. So because people have started to give up, the job unemployment numbers are going down. That is horrible, to be honest. Sad. Ugh. Anyway. Anyway, St. Louis uh, Guide to Surviving a Zombie Apocalypse. Maybe we won't need jobs soon. Yes, let's give up this. on jobs. Wait, what did you say? Oh, the zombie apocalypse, if that came. How are we going to... Uh, what's what's the deal with that, Brain? Okay, so this is from the St. Louis subreddit. And I'd love to just read all of this, but I know we're already like probably running long. But essentially, okay, so go out to our um, subreddit and go basically find the link. Upvote it first. And then go find this uh, post, which is the St. Louis Guide to Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse. It's quite funny, to be honest. Um... So they're going off of the recent activities of, there was a news story about uh, a guy who was uh, high on some sort of drug, bit, or was eating another guy's in face. In Florida, he was yes. naked and eating a guy's face, and, and the cop they... popped two in his head. Bow, yeah. bow. But he still kept running at the cop. Really? I yes. didn't hear that part. Yes. The, the bullets didn't stop him, but there are actually many cases like that. It's the drugs. Moving on, if the zombie apocalypse happened, these are places you might want to avoid, Gavin. Bush Stadium. Why? Open air, easy broken into. The Magic House. Wait, that's where we had my... I know. It seems fun at first, but think about how horrifying it would be once the zombies infiltrate. Chesterfield or West County Mall. Please secure the malls. We'll skip around here. They say don't go to the Arch. Um, where should I go? Okay, where should you go? Places to go? Edward Jones Dome. Not wow. open air. More secure. Galleria. Beefed up security. I know. I would go somewhere where no one knows. Why would you go to a major thoroughfare? Why don't you hide in a in like your own house, like they do in uh, what's the zombie TV show? Um, the broken the 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 undead. Oh my god. Anyway, moving That's on. That's embarrassing. Yes. But they just hid out in their house and covered the blinds. On the farm, but actually they're going into uh, the yeah. next season, they're going to be in a prison. Oh, I only seen saw like the first two episodes. So. Oh, well, it's at the very end of this last season. Anyway, other places you should go, the zoo. Animals are immune to the zombie virus, and Raja will lead us to safety. What the heck? The art museum, nobody goes there anyway, so the zombies won't think to. Also, if you can get to the top of the art museum, you can shoot the zombies running up the hill. Uh, Escaping down the river should be our primary plan. That's definitely true. Yes. Uh, the, the, now, if you scroll down in the comments, there's things against that. Like, if you're floating down a boat, zombies will jump on your boat from bridges, they say. Wait, I thought they can't, but zombies can't be in water? Zombies can't swim, is what they say. But now you have some, Why couldn't like, you swim? They, they don't have motor skills like that. Uh, they essentially could just walk across the bottom of it, but the salt water, well, it's not salt water. Um... This is in the zombie survival guide, which is somewhere over Dude, there. Dude, I don't care about the bridge fact. That At least it's limiting them to the bridges. That's true. That means you only get, like, two on your boat per, like, per hour. You'll easily be able to shoot that. Maybe. But you don't want to be using guns. Why not? Too much noise. <laughs> Limited ammo supply. Blades are better. You don't have to reload them. Um, the Del Mar Loop is another place you should go because it's where the zombies hang out already. And they'd be confused. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, I thought that was funny. So speaking of Reddit, um, you guys can go check that out on our subreddit. There's and some put, of them. And we'll also put it in the show notes. Others, like, don't go to Monsanto because they probably caused the outbreak anyway. <laughs> I, I, there's some of these that are funny. The original Zombie Squad is from St. Louis. You should join up with them. And there are rumors that Imbev took over AB because they knew Monsanto was producing a zombie gene. Yes. Mm. And the beer is the solution. All right. It's now All time right. for. Do we have a jingle yet? Um, someone out there, you need to create us a jingle. Yes. Braden's subreddit of the week. Now for this, we randomly hit. 
the random button, yes, and we come up with a random subreddit, and it was going to be Boston, because we thought they were going to come out and watch us the, tonight. We got like 15 posts on the Boston subreddit, and they said they would watch us. They, did we get any numbers? I no, we did not. I don't think they actually said that they this would the watch us. That... I think one post person just posted that this is probably how you get people to watch your show. Why Why did we get upvotes then? That's my question. Eh, well, people like us. Um, so what, so screw you, oh, Boston. There's three comments on here now. Or are these all you? <laughs> I, mine is one of them. So what's our actual new subreddit of the week? It was a submission from the chat room. Wait, wait, wait what is this? What? Ah, uh, BY-SA licensed. Nice. What? I have just, no idea what that means. Just He's a Boston on. moderator. Go, <laughs> go on with the program, Sorry. Brayden. Stop being... Go. Okay, what? so another random subreddit of the week Our is... Our actual random subreddit of the week. And Gavin's declaring it. All right. Shitty Ask Science is... <laughs> Submitted to us by Rob G. in the chat room. Ooh, I like their up and down thing. Anyway, since... Al okay, so these are some of the posts that are in Shitty Ask Science. It it's essentially a very joke-worthy... Um, things with science just thrown in. Um, the very top post right now is, Since alcohol kills bacteria, how many shots should I take for my ear infection? <laughs> If my computer is in sleep mode, what does it dream about? Now, that's very much like, uh, do androids dream of electric sheep? Anyway. How uh, are backwards baseball caps made? <laughs> <laughs> when sitting in a chair, is it possible to fart so hard you break the legs of said chair? <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> sure, what? What? Oh, what other what other good ones? Rob had some good ones. When you're when you upvote a comment, you're not just expressing approval. You're saying that this is the best comment in the thread, and everyone should see this first. No, oh, this is just general. <laughs> Have you got a science question that's mainstream science can't answer? Have you got a great theory or experiment to share with the world, <laughs> but no one will publish it? Do you need assistance building a doomsday machine or shopping for? M Monstrous assist. What? Monstrous assist? Okay. The esteemed pair, uh, panelists at Shitty Ash Science are here to help. Rob's so favorite is. that? Yes, it is. Is time tra travel possible? Okay. Get it? Oh. Uh, uh, I think my new favorite is if no scientists have gone to the sun because it's too hot, why don't they just go at night? <laughs> Anyway, anyway, uh, okay. There's our there's our subreddit of the week. Boston, we still love you. Sort of. Kind of. I thought cool. Okay, so the thing that I was going to point out on Boston was the fact that their second post, or at least when I saw it, was that they have a whole map of in Minecraft of their Fenway Park. In Minecraft. That's not cool. Represent. The tech it pack. Add oh, we should add the uh, Minecraft wedding post to our show notes just for fun. Okay. We can't talk about it. We'll, we'll throw that in there. Not tech. Go to our um, subreddit. So our finally, our last story tonight is not really a story, but kind of a fun and interesting thing is the use of SSIDs to show political allegiance. Have we talked about this on the show, Brayden? No, I don't think so. I mean, so it's an interesting... There's so much interesting stuff about... Um, your SSID because no, 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 no. for our non-technical viewers, it's that the might name just on your wireless home. network. Okay, thank you. The name on your wireless network. Everyone has a Wi-Fi network, and everyone is asked to change it nowadays. And it's being broadcast out there to where your phone's gonna like see it. Like, do you want to connect to Ludwig van? Because that's my wireless network. Anyway, um, this this story is talking about. Well, my first point is that. I heard some legal issues that are interesting based on if you put a lewd or inappropriate term in there, is it, like, violating FCC guidelines? Because, you know, like, kids could easily pull up a phone. Because you are technically broadcasting. And you could, um, yeah, but you could, I mean, you could put whatever you want in there, and then suddenly the kid sees something that, you know, they're ruined for life. Mine one, my, mine back in the day was Fisk U War Drivers. Yeah, so which FSK is. And this Linux is a big command. deal in in uh, big cities where you can easily. I think in my apartment in Chicago, we had Rob can tell me the exact number, but I think we had fifteen to twenty 
uh, networks just within range of our apartment. Um, but Were anyway, they all Linksys? <laughs> no, they're not all Linksys. Because they ask you to change it nowadays. Okay. So that's why this is happening. And apparently these people on uh, Open Signal Maps, which is where you find the best network in your area, whatever that means, uh, are mapping political allegiances based on if you say, like, impeach Obama, or if you name it Obama is gold, or vote Obama, or something. Essentially, they parse through all the Im- ones that were opened and saw what had Obama in it and basically posted what else was posted with it. And yeah, so yeah. then they can they can basically war drive and collect all the names of all the networks, and then they can do analytics on them, which is super interesting. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of data. It's hard to come up with just a single um, answer to whether people like Obama or like the another example they were using was in Buenos Aires. Um, what about like these ones that are like Air Force One Obama edition that really doesn't make any sense at all? They had, they they essentially had to come up with a a third category. It seems like not sure what this really means, but. Anyway, that's uh, the interesting story of the night. Uh, you guys can all go out and do some war driving. If you don't know what that means, Google it. And essentially, change your SSID to um, show off your political interest. Yeah, I'm going to change mine to Ron Paul for life. <laughs> there you go. I think he will be just, he'll just go on forever. He'll never win. But he'll just keep running he'll just keep every running year. For life. And essentially, we'll just replace him like with his son or an android of him, and he'll just keep running. Well, by that time, we'll we'll achieve infinite life, right? Yeah, we're 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 close to that. <laughs> Where can people find you on the net, Braden? Uh, I can be found on G Plus. Uh, Google me, Braden Henze. Um, I'm also on the Facebooks or at Twitter at Braden H. Um, yeah, go to Henzy Digital Media. I'm going to like post probably all my resume stuff on there, too. So hire me, please. Gavin, where can they find you out there? Find me on gavinr.com slash links is where you can find a list of, list of my accounts, including Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, Pinterest, Pinboard, and Foursquare. Oh, and you can see my recent bookmarks, which I bookmarked clippy.js. You can add Clippy from Microsoft Word. No. To any website. No. You can add it to henzydigitalmedia.com. In fact, I will do that right now. Absolutely not. Clippy can go die in a fire. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Subscribe.